So we looked at pipe, we looked at a method to actually communicate between multiple processes. In this case, uh, in this video, we're going to show you how to uh, make use of that. How, how is this useful in real life? And here's a really neat uh, solution to a problem that you might have seen before. And uh, it's very common when uh, first starting out with multiple processes or multiple threads. Uh, and that problem is simple. We have an array, just say an array, and that array has multiple elements. Just gonna add here one, two, three, four, one, and two, let's say. And what I want is to sum all the elements up, but I want to sum them all up in a different manner, in a manner that uh, takes advantage of multiple processors on the computer, basically. And it sums them all up by dividing the array into two and leaving half of the array to be calculated by one of the process and the other one by the other process. And at the end, both processes will have a partial sum and one process will write that uh, partial sum to the pipe and the other one is gonna read it and just sum them all up together. So let's first get started by initializing our pipe. Here I'm gonna say int fd of two and if pipe of fd is negative one. So if we create a pipe, but it fails, I'm just going to return one that signifies an error message, an error code. And uh, we we'll simply stop the program at that point. You can actually add an error message in this uh, code block here. Next up, we create a, another process. I'm going to say int id equals fork. And if the id is negative one, then we know that the fork also fails. I'm going to say return two in this case. The really the numbers here don't signify much. You can again add an error message if you want. Next up, what we have to do is uh, well, since we're dividing the array up into multiple parts, each process has to know where to start and where to end uh, its partial sum, basically. So we need two indices. We need a start and an end index. So here I'm going to say int start and end. And uh, if we are in the child process, so if id is zero then what we want to do is say uh, start equals zero and end is going to be start plus well plus what uh, we can say plus three and then it's going to be fine but let's say i want the program to already work with bigger arrays right because three is um the size of our array over two right we have six elements in the array but suppose we have n elements how do we do that well to get, we need to first get the size of this array. To do that, it's very simple. What we have to do is just say int, uh, let's say array size equals, and we can just use size of array. And this guy gives us the number of bytes in the array, but we don't want just that. We want the number of bytes in the array divided by the number of bytes in an int. And that will give us the number of integers in the array. Okay, so this is the number of elements in here, and we can actually add it here and say array size over two, right? And that's gonna be a floored value. So if we have seven elements, this guy's gonna be three. If we have uh, 11, this guy's gonna be five and so on and so forth. So keep this in mind. Else, well, what we want to do, the parent process, I want it to uh, start from the middle up till the end. So start where the child process left off. So here I'm gonna say, array size over two and then end well exactly at array size because we want to get to the end of it okay <clears throat> and really we can actually remove this start this is just uh, to signify that we have a difference between this and this but the start here is just zero either way so we can simply remove it and just say and array size of over two so now that we have the indices we should calculate the sum for every process. So here I'm gonna just start with an uh, sum equals zero and I'm gonna initialize an i. So for i equals, well not, not zero, but start. And remember, every single process has their start value, right? So the child is gonna have zero and the parent is gonna have this uh, number. So I'm gonna say here e, i equals start. Let me actually move it a bit down. i less than end and i plus plus. And here we simply do sum plus equals array of i, just that. Now that the sum has been calculated, let's actually print it on screen so that we can see that, well, something was calculated and it 
goes right up until here. So you can say printf calculated partial sum percent d and actually a colon in there backslash n uh, sum. Okay, and if I run this, let's see if we get the proper result. All right, so we get two partial sums. We get seven and six. Is that correct? Let's check. So here we have one plus two plus three. That should be six. So that's probably the child process. And four plus one plus two is seven. Remember, they don't have to be in the same order because they are actually parallel. They are executing in parallel. They are not executing one after the other. This is very important. And this is why we're actually dividing the work between the two processes. All right, so now we actually are summing them up properly for every, well, partial sum. But when, now we need to actually send one of the partial sums over to the other process. How do we do that? Using the pipe that we have, uh, you, that we have created. So I'm going to say here, if id is zero, if we're in the child process, what I want here is to, well, send that partial sum to the parent process. I'm going to say here, uh, write. And I'm going to write to FD of one because that is the right end of our pipe. I'm going to write whatever is in sum and I'm going to write size of some bytes. Should be self-explanatory why we need to do this. You can actually use int here if you want. That's the same thing. And don't forget that if uh, you're done reading or writing from a file descriptor, from a pipe, you should close that file descriptor. So I'm going to say close FD of one and of course also close fd of zero because um, in the child process we're not reading anything we're just sending data we're not actually receiving any data so it's fine we can just close that right away and then else here in the parent process again i'm going to close the writing end because in the parent we're not going to write anything we're just going to read so i say read fd of uh, zero we're going to read into some variable. So we need here a variable, let's say int sum from child and the address of sum from child. And then of course, size of sum from child or size of int that also works. And of course, close the file descriptor again. Okay. And uh, lastly, well, we have both the sums in the parent we have this sum which is from the children or just from the child process and uh, we also have this sum from up top that we have calculated on our own uh, execution line so here we can just say int total sum equals sum plus sum from child and just print f this total sum total sum is percent d backslash n and total sum simple like that and of course at the end here I should also wait for the child process to finish before anything, because that's not guaranteed that after we wrote to this uh, to this pipe, the process has finished its execution. We have you have to wait for the for each of your children processes. Okay, so now if I run this, we should get seven, six, and that's thirteen, right? And this is programmatically uh, done where we probably get this six send over um, from the child process to the parent process where the parent process now will have six and seven both together and uh, it just sums them all up. So we can test this if this works correctly if we add more numbers. So we say let's let's add a seven for example. So if I add a seven here, well we should still get six because remember the first three numbers are going to be summed up in the child process because here array size over two is seven over two, which is three. So we get the first three and the rest are going to be summed up by the parent. So that is correct. And the parent gets 14 and that's well, well, let me check four plus one plus two. That's seven plus seven is 14, right? So if we had another one, we should get another result here. So if I add this, should get 17 and 10. 10 because it's probably 1 plus 2 plus 3. So it's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. That's 10. And this is uh, this is 3. This is 10. And this is 17, right? 
and the end result was I didn't even read it let's check it was 27 so we got 10 plus 17 equals 27 in a distributed manner so imagine this is very useful if the array is really large imagine the array is like hundreds of thousands of elements in that case it would be really useful and imagine that the also the processing part is not just summing them all up because that's very simple uh, but if you actually have to process the, that data and you can do it independently so the like processing half of the array is independent of processing the other half then you can distribute it and you can actually add more and more processes if you really need to now one thing i did omit is actually checking for errors so should actually do that in here so if right is negative one we should actually return i think i'm going to return here three and if read is negative one if something bad happened return four usually these are not going to happen but it's it's better to just get used to checking for errors because later on if you have large uh large code base based on all this uh, multi-process programming uh, you might have a lot of issues with finding out what's wrong with it but if you actually have these just this if and uh, either exit of four or return of four then it's very easy to find out you just go oh, okay so we got uh, the exit code four so we can just take a look at where we return four in the program and very simple very easy it's going to be to find that oh, okay so the read to the pipe failed in some way that's going to be for you to figure it out so i hope you got something out of this video if you do have any questions or if i missed something or if you uh, have any recommendations uh do leave them down in the comments below or on our discord server by the way i think a uh, good homework from this video to actually try and uh, do is instead of having just two processes try to have three processes right so try to have instead of just one child one child process have two children processes and uh, they both get part of the array and you then send both the partial sums to the parent process and then you sum them all up together try to do that i think it's very straightforward it's very similar to what we did here except with more uh more pipes and more child processes but right. thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Take care. Bye.